What is going on guys? I'm Adriano and welcome to my channel Data Angel Uncomplicated. This video is on how to set environment variables through a cloud formation template for a Lambda function and then retrieving these variables through a Lambda function written in Python. We're going to be running this Lambda function locally with PyCharm and then finally deploying this serverless Lambda function through PyCharm as well. So why might you want to use AWS Lambda environment variables? Well, you can use environment variables to adjust your function's behavior without updating code. So if you have multiple lambdas, for example, you can set different S3 buckets depending on what lambda is being triggered. So if you want to follow along with your own Python functions, you're going to first need to install the AWS CLI. So first you're going to have to create an AWS account. You're then going to have to configure your IAM permissions and AWS credentials. You're then going to need to install Docker and install the AWS CLI. Once you've done that, in PyCharm, you're going to have to add the AWS Toolkit plugin, which can be found at Settings, go to Plugins, and type in AWS Toolkit, and you're just going to have to install that. All right, so now that we covered the prerequisites, let's jump into setting up our CloudFormation template with environment variables. So there's two ways you can set environment variables within CloudFormation template for our Lambda. It can be added to the global section of your cloud formation templates. So under the environment option, you have the variable parameter, and then you can basically add all your environment variables under this. So here I went ahead to get us started to add a variable called raw underscore bucket. This represents the name of one of my S3 buckets. So when I add these environment variables under the global section, every single one of my lambdas that I end up adding to my project can actually leverage this. Now, perhaps you have environment variables that are only specific to my Lambda function, then that could be added under our resource section in our CloudFormation template. So within the properties of our AWS serverless function, you can see that we've specified the, the code URL of our Lambda folder. So I'm pointing it to my Lambda folder on my left-hand side over here, and then I am adding the Lambda handler. So if we look at our Lambda function that I've created, uh, you can see that the function name is Lambda handler. So if we go back to our Lambda function here, you can see that I've just added that handler. So if I want to create a new environment variable that is exclusive to my Lambda function, then I'll need to add it to the specific Lambda resource over here. So I'm going to add my environment object here. And then I'm going to add variables. Similar to the global function, I can now add my environment variables here. So I'm going to create a new variable called standardize underscore bucket. I'm just going to name it same, but add standardize to the name. Great, so that was simple enough to add these environment variables to our CloudFormation template. But now let's talk about how to actually retrieve this in our Lambda. So heading over to my Lambda that I created, so to start off our Lambda function here, I've just imported logging and OS. I'm going to use logging to log my environment variable name later on when I run this, but I've imported OS. So you're going to need this function specifically to be able to call your environment variables within your Lambda function. So if we take a look at line nine in my code over here, I can see that I've just added raw underscore bucket. So I've made my Python variable and now I've called os.getenv. And then I just simply pass the name of the environment variable into this line of code. Go back to our template here. You can see that it's going to grab this name from raw underscore bucket. One thing I want to point out is if you actually use the same name of the environment variable within the global area, within the local instantiation over here, what's going to happen is the local one is going to take precedence. So in the event that I ran my code on this, it's actually going to use this variable rather than the global one. All right, so going back to our Lambda function, another thing I want to point out is you can actually use os.environ as well and basically pass in the name of your environment variable here like this. You choose to use this method for retrieving environment variables. One thing to point out that in the event that this doesn't exist, your Python script's going to fail. All right, so now that I pass my environment variable, it should be contained within raw underscore bucket. So within my Python handler here, you can see that I've initiated logging.info and I've passed the name of that raw bucket to our info logger here. I'm actually going to add another line and we're going to do logging.info and I'm also now going to pass in that new parameter I created with you earlier here. So I'm just going to add in this is the name of the standardized bucket. And we're going to now pass in that name, but let's first create that variable here. So we're going to call it standardized underscore bucket. 
and that is going to be equal to os.getenv. And just to be sure we're grabbing the right name, I'm going to go back to our template and pass in that name to our variable here. All right, so now let's just put that within our logging message here. And now that should be good to run. So before I run this locally, we have to make sure we configured our Lambda to run locally. I'm just going to go to edit my configuration here. If you didn't add one already, you can just go to AWS Lambda and select local. Um, and you want to make sure that under configuration, you add your YAML file that you've created. So I've went ahead to point that to the YAML function that I showed you earlier. And you want to make sure that you're pointing this. You should see a drop down that points to the function here. And you should be able to select your function name over here. Now, what you saw is it dynamically added that new environment variable. So now if I select the browse button, you should see that PyCharm actually recognizes that I have two environment variables. So this is great. It actually detected it successfully. And now my function isn't actually calling any input. So this doesn't matter. It's not going to be initiated here. So uh, when that looks good, you can hit apply. Um, another thing I just want to point out is you want to make sure you go to SAM CLI, make sure you build functions inside a container. And I'm going to say oh, apply and hit OK. So now we can go ahead and give this a run. It should take a couple of seconds to build. When we expect the results, everything looks good. Within our logger, we can see that we've been able to pull in our name here of the raw bucket and also pull the name of our standardized bucket. And going back to the template here, you can see that it got this from standardized variable here and the raw bucket that was defined in our global area of our template. And going back to our Python script over here, you can see that we get a message saying that our environment variables have been successfully retrieved. I manually added that within a return statement in my Lambda function. So this is great. We've successfully retrieved our environment variables that we set within our CloudFormation template. And now we can dynamically use these how we see fit in our Lambda. So up until this point, I've done all of this on my local machine. I haven't had to go into my console to see the results, but let's go ahead and deploy this function now so we can actually see what it looks like in our AWS console. So within PyCharm here, all I have to do is right click on my YAML function, go to deploy serverless application, and I'm just going to go create a new stack. I'm going to call it testing environment variable Lambda, and that is good there. Now you're just going to have to pass it to an S3 bucket and make sure to select build function inside a container. And now I'm just going to hit deploy. So it's going to take a couple of seconds to deploy. You can see within my console, it's telling me that it's actively building. It validated the Docker. Um, I was able to build it, packaged it up, and now it's just creating a change set. So within PyTerm, you can actually see it building dynamically. All right, so all my arrows are green here. I think we are now done. Let's go ahead and check what our Lambda function looks like in the console. So within the console, if we navigate to AWS CloudFormation template, we select on stacks. We can see that our CloudFormation template has successfully deployed. So let's just go ahead and view our Lambda. I'm just going to go to our Lambda service. And now we can see that our function has been added. If you want to make sure your environment variables have been successfully configured, we go to configuration here, we go to environment variables, there it is. You can see both of our environment variables now are appearing after deployment. So there you go. We have successfully created environment variables within our CloudFormation template, called them successfully and ran them in our Lambda locally, and then deployed that CloudFormation template to AWS. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and please consider subscribing to my channel if you want to support me making more videos and you don't miss out on my next one. See you next time.